implementing it. So a few more extras that we have in 8.6. The binary encode and decode commands added in 8.5 now actually have a base 64 um, encoding and decoding. Uh, so the base 64, which is a rather simple algorithm and very popular for use, now actually has a C implementation and makes life much easier for where you need base 64 encoding and decoding. Um, the binary command itself, with the in addition of encode and decode, sorry, that was added to 8.6, is now become a namespace ensemble itself. So further additions to binary can be done much, e much more easily. There is also base 60, uh, sorry, base 2 support in the format and scan commands with percent %b. So if you're getting something that is in zeros and ones, you can now much more easily scan or uh, format out in that format. The dict filter command has been enhanced to take multiple pattern arguments, just a simplification uh, for dict filter users. Uh, Windows registry extension has been extended to have 64-bit support. This is very important with the uh, widespread use of Windows 64 because it, uh, when you run Windows 64, there are both separate 32 and 64-bit sets of the registry for uh, the different com for the different 32 and 64-bit program uh, application sets, and now you have full access to this in Tickle. Uh, in addition, there is a new key in the Tickle platform array called path separator. This is the uh, path separator for env path, which is the path of commands, uh, path to find commands in your uh, environment, not for file paths. For that, you use the file separator command. But wait, there's even more stuff. There are um, a lot more commands have been changed to take no args gracefully. This was done to actually reduce non-essential error cases and uh, was precipitated by the addition of the expansion operator, which is the curly braces with the star in 8.5. That made it much easier to uh, create code that would potentially error if you had no arguments passed in but they were essential they were non-essential error cases so uh, if you look at tip 323 there's a full list of the commands that have been uh, reduced from making errors to just uh, quietly ignoring no error no args in addition to that uh, we have a new try finally syntax this is uh, basically a fancy alternative to catch everything you could do with catch was possible with the try finally, except these, this syntax is much easier and much friendlier to people familiar with other languages, um, giving you the try command, you have a body, but potentially other handlers uh, for certain items, and then a uh, possible optional finally uh, script that can be run. Inside of try, you can also have throw, throw specific types of messages for the handler to, to for the handlers to handle, and that's basically an alternative to error inside of the try command. Here are two examples of it. On the right hand side, we basically are trying to write to a file, um, and we'll if anything occurs in our uh, attempts there, we'll just close it. On the bottom, we are trying to open the file itself, and the then we show a couple of handlers for trapping POSIX errors, one being that it's a directory, not a file, the other being that it doesn't exist at all. That's, so those are two examples of where you might use the new try finally syntax. Um, and talking about files, files and channels also have changes. There is a new file temp file command, which takes optional uh, name variable uh, in which to place the the temp file uh, name and a template um, which most people won't need to use but basically it creates a temp file and returns a channel it does not return the name of the temporary file because this is done in a way to provide the most secure uh, temp file behavior across platforms and the best way to do that is returning a channel to the user 
So you would just uh, do the file temp file, you get your channel, and then you would close it when you're done with it. In addition, the chan command, which was added in 8.5 and is an ensemble, has received some new commands um, and new enhancements. The first enhancement is that close can only close the read or write side. This can be very handy when you're dealing with sockets where you've uh, pumped everything you, you have down and you say, look, I'm done uh, you know, writing to it, but just in case you've got a two-way communication, I'll leave the read open. Uh, another one is that anonymous pipes have been exposed. They were available in C. They are now available at the tickle level with the Chan pipe command. And tickle level channel transformations are um, now possible with Chan push and pop. Um, these are from the what was previously the Tickle IO uh, generic transform package. In, in addition to that, IPv6 is now supported in the socket command, um, and it currently uses the uh, operating system preference for the address family selection. Oh, but wait, there's even more. So now we have uh, in Tickle the entire Zlib um, library and there's a you know branch bit in the sources that you'll find it is possible for those who um, compile and, and need to use the operating system version it is possible to configure tickle with that but this basically brings zlib compression into the core building on the standard zlib sources allowing full zip and unzip support for both gzip and the zlib formats and of course, it does support channel streaming for chan, uh, transforms. So with the additions of the Chan push and pop and, uh, and also things like the Base64 encoding and decoding, you could open a channel, uh, quickly push Zlib compression, and then push binary 64 decoding so that you can, uh, in, in a matter of three lines of code, have a compressed but uh, human, or rather, uh, non-binary -bi independent uh, stream pushing down your channel, pushing down the channels in the new Tickle 8.6. There are also the two uh, checksum commands, Adler32 and CRC32, both of course coming from the Zlib sources so it is optimized C code. There is a full C API that goes along with this and it all has the Tickle Zlib prefix. So a little bit more about the C side for 8.6. Um, there's been more effort to make the tickle interp structure opaque. That means that finally in 8.6 there is no more access to interp uh, result element. You now have to use tickle get string result or you can get obj result if you are using tickle objects which is of course the better way to go. Um, then of course there is a now also an API for interp error line which is the get or set error line. Um, so that no more direct access to the tickle interp structure should be necessary. There should be a full, there is a full set of C APIs to access the bits that you need. In addition to that, there is access to the startup scripts from C. This is mostly important for those who are doing uh, wrapping technology such as the star kit stuff or free wrap, um, and, although it may be useful for those who are embedding tickle. And then the uh, tickle transfer result, that was simply moved from being a private API to a public API for transferring results between interpreters. And the tickle, uh, another structure that was we are trying to make more opaque is the tickle stat buff. As compilers change and um, the structure changes more and more between different OSs, we realized that a full set of C APIs would be much better than trying to make one opaque, uh, uh, sorry, one transparent stat buff structure that actually uh, tries to accommodate all those operating systems. In addition to that, there is a C API for tickle background exception, uh, which basically is the same as uh, BG error at the tickle level. So a little bit more about changes to 8.6 under the hood. There are uh, new exported library loading functions, the tickle load file, find symbol, and fs unload file. Uh, these make it much easier to preload DLLs, find symbols in them, and can be very useful for certain uh, 
extension authors. Windows itself is moving to a full uh, dash D Unicode build. This means that we are dropping support for anything prior to Windows XP in 8.6, um, which of course Microsoft itself has dropped long ago. Um, in addition, uh, OS X is moving to Coco, so that means that it, in 8.6 you will only uh, it will only support OS X 10.5, which is Leopard or later, and this does allow to have 64-bit builds. Um, and the next version of IncraTickle, uh, which is called V4, is also using the Tickle OO infrastructure that I mentioned earlier. The thread extension is also being included in the core sources, and threaded builds are now the default. So, um, you know, check for that if you really don't want to be using threads. And we're still looking at considering other extensions for inclusion with the core sources. So, one of those other extensions is TDBC, the Tickle Database Connectivity Layer. And it's a basically a standard interface for database connectors. It currently has the drivers uh, for SQLite, MySQL, ODBC, and Postgres. And it does leverage the Tickle OO framework. Here we have an example of its usage where we're using uh, SQLite th uh, 3 and the TDBC connector for that. You see we create a simple connection. Um, and being SQLite 3, it's essentially going to open a single file on the disk. We create a uh, SQL statement with the DB prepare command, uh, DB being the, the database connection we've created. And then, of course, there's the transaction. We see the transaction listed. Uh, you'll notice that there's the, in the where first name equal to colon first name, this is where we're indicating things that we want to expose at the tickle level as uh, variables in the transaction you see them used again and basically we're going to iterate over each row uh, with the, the statement and for each and then of course we close our statement and then close the database to wrap everything up so that uh, wraps up m most of what we'll see in tickle 8.6 now I'll be moving on to TK First off, uh, new in TK86 is Windows Vista 7 theme support for TTK. This was backported to 8.5.8. .8. It is the TTK VS API um, command and basically allows us to further extend our native theming uh, onto the newer features uh, shown in Windows Vista and Windows 7. In addition, there's updated mouse wheel behavior in tip, uh, as defined or described in TIP 171. And as I mentioned before, the TK OS X is now moving to Coco. This does enable 64-bit builds. Uh, however, it does enforce an OS X uh, Leopard or higher requirement. It is also available in TK 8.5 as a branch. Uh, and this work was all done by Daniel Steffen. There is uh, several new Canvas features, which you see in the, used in the screenshot to the right. There's first is absolute Canvas item positioning which is uh, for the Canvas cohort feature, just a slightly easier way to move Canvas items around. Then there's easier editing of vertices in Canvas items. And finally, there are now angled text is now uh, exposed to users at the Canvas level. So on to the next slide. And the next feature we have for 8.6 is the uh, TK86 font dialog. And it uses the native uh, dialog on Windows and OS X and a TK built one on X11. And in order to make it work with the native dialogs, the, it, is, it has a slightly different uh, way of operating where you actually have to request that it be showed, uh, shown and then you do a TK font user configure and it also will, will give you callbacks to say when things have changed in there. And that's the way it can be made to work with both uh, Windows and OS X native dialogues. 